Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to learn how to perfectly trim geometry in SketchUp using the Trim to Face tool. And I'll also demonstrate how you can create openings within those profiles using Profile Builder 4. Let's dive in. So this is a feature that lets you take any profile member, think of framing, beams, pipes, or even exterior finishes, and automatically cuts it so it fits perfectly between two faces. Now, instead of manually intersecting and trimming, this feature will do the precision work for you. So let's start by creating a profile, which we're going to use to cover this entire frame. So these are the 2D shapes that we're going to create a profile from. So open profile dialog. First, let's select our longer profile. Click on the plus icon and we'll just give it a new name, Siding one And now we have our first profile. So that was pretty easy. Now the next thing we're going to do is cover our framing with our siding. Click build and you get a preview of your profile placement. Now for the placement, you can use the arrow keys to shift the axis. So we'll keep it on the blue axis. You can press tab to mirror your profile. As you can see, it mirrors from front to back. Use the end key to cycle through the rotation. So I'm gonna rotate this until I am comfortable. That seems to be correct. And use the home key to change my placement point. So this is exactly how I want it. I'm going to click and hold shift to create my profile. So pretty easy, I'm going to repeat that workflow one more time. And now we've covered that entire part of the cabin. Let's repeat the same on the other side and we should have something like this. So let's repeat these steps to cover the sloped area of the roof. And as you can see, it's completely covered on each side. So let's repeat that for the front. Click build. And use the shortcuts to make sure you have the right placement. And I'll build this so it matches the height of this post. And in a few minutes, I'll show you how you can trim so it fits the slope of the roof. And for the other side, we're actually going to create a new profile. So I'll select this other 2D shape, hit new, and we'll call this siding two. So we can now go on to the other side and we're going to create one profile. So click build. Once again, adjust the placement. We're going to extrude it once. And from here, we'll just make multiple copies. So now here is where things become interesting. In this case here, we would like to extend the siding so that it fits perfectly within this angle. So if you were to use a SketchUp native tools for this workflow, you would have to ensure both shapes overlap and you would then intercept the faces so there's a little bit of a separation. And even after doing that, you would still need to do a lot of cleanup so you can get rid of the unwanted edges. And unfortunately, this is a workflow that takes a lot of time. But Profile Builder has a very useful feature for workflows like this. So I'm going to select the Trim to Face tool. Next, we're going to select the faces to trim to. So hold Shift to select multiple faces. I can then click on my profile and it will trim right to the selected faces. As you can see, this saves so much time instead of trimming the faces with the SketchUp native tools. For this next example, we're going to trim multiple profiles. I'm going to pre-select my profile, select trim to face, select my two faces by holding shift. And once I click on my profiles again, it's going to trim to those faces. And just like that, we have a completely covered cabin with wood siding. One of the advantages of using Profile Builder profiles is that you can use the whole tool to create openings. And this is going to be very useful for creating doors and window openings. 
So let's start by opening the whole tool dialog. And here you can see we got a couple of default shapes. We have circle, which lets you adjust the diameter as well as the segments. You have square and you have a custom shape. We have a tutorial already covering this tool in depth. So I'll link it in the description as well as on the corner of the screen. So we're going to start with a rectangle shape. As for the width, we're going to pick this up maybe four feet, four inches. And the height will be four feet for a typical window height. The full depth allows you to set a custom depth for the opening. So you can set this to be maybe two feet but we're going to check this so that it cuts through the entire profile. So let's go into the side of our cabin and now we can add our opening. Once again, I'm going to cycle through my placement point and once I see the right fit, I can add that opening in my profile. And without deactivating the tool, you can actually add as many openings as you want. So from here, I can press escape and I can just add as many openings to my project as I want. Now, there are also a couple of other uh, important shortcuts here. You can use control to set a reference point. For example, I can come into this corner, hit control and set that as a reference point. And now I can set a distance from that point. For example, I can switch this to my top midpoint, right? And from that reference point, I can hold shift to lock to the face and I can just select the midpoint. So I set this door right in the middle. So this is very helpful as far as being accurate to the position of your openings. So as you can see, this is also another flexible tool within Profile Builder that allows you to create openings quickly within your projects instead of cutting these openings automatically, which can be very time consuming. So as you can see, this is something that can be done fairly quick with just a couple of profile builder tools. So make sure you give it a try in your next SketchUp model. And that's going to be all. Hopefully those tips were very helpful. Trim to face and the whole tool are just one of those features that feel very small, but very important when creating architectural models. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and comment down below on what you'd like to see next. And a comment with the most likes will eventually get a video or a reel on the channel. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.